Hey Flosstube, it's Elena here, the Stitching Farmer. I'm back for an update. Today is June the 19th, so I didn't miss last month. I missed doing a May update, but I just started a new job, and so I've been really busy. Um, the drive to my uh, the hospital where I'm working is an hour, so it's like I've been working 10 hour days and an hour drive both ways on top of it. So I would come home and I would like put the kids to bed and then get out my stitching and then 10 minutes later I was falling asleep on the couch. So I didn't get much done this last month. Or uh, yeah, so in May I didn't really get a lot done. So I didn't really have anything to film. Um, I don't have, I've stitched a decent amount this month. I started doing my um, seven on seven off. This is my first off seven off this week. Um, it's currently day six of my seven off stretch. And I have felt like I was, I have been on vacation. It's been great. I love it. But I know it's going to be a little different. I haven't started overnights yet, but I do know that once I do, do start the overnights, I've heard like going back and forth, it can be a challenge. Um, just getting your days and your nights back on track. So like, um, they say like the week you're on working overnight, so it gets easier, but then going back, trying to go back to days on your week off, I've heard you lose like two days a lot of times. We'll see. I haven't started it yet. I don't know. Um, I've been trying to plan out how I'm going to do it. I've been thinking maybe um, staying up as late or as much as I can that first day off and then just going to bed early and hopefully that will get me back on track, like trying to make it to like four or five and then going to sleep like really early. And then so I'll probably be up at like 4 a.m. or something, but that's fine, because that gives me quiet stitchy time. And then so hopefully that will get me back on today. So I thought about trying that. Other people have said try to take a nap, like right when you get home, sleep till noon. I'm not a very good napper, so I don't know if that will really work for me. So I wanna try it my way first, the um, stay up as late as you can that first day, and then try to get back on track and see how that goes. So we'll see, I'm excited to do it. I'm still nervous about um, flying solo. It's um, hospital pharmacy is so different from retail pharmacy. It's just like a complete 180. Like I don't have to deal with people. So that's one other than like nurses. So that's one good thing. Cause sometimes it get, get people get a little intense working retail pharmacy, but the, like a lot of the drugs are different. Some of them, there is some crossover, um, but like just the critical care drips, like I'd never see that in retail pharmacy. So that part is completely different. So I've been having to learn a lot and just learn a new computer system. And so it's been a big change. I, I like a challenge though. So I've been enjoying it so far. Um, so I don't know, do I say what date? So today's the June the 19th. So yesterday in the U.S. it was Father's Day, so we went to um, McGuire's in Pensacola and, and had lunch. It was a really long wait though. And I feel like ever since the pandemic, like things are starting to get back to normal, but it's like the quality is not the same, the service is not the same, it's just not the same level that it was. And although the service at McGuire's was really good, but the food wasn't as good. Like it was, I had eggs Benedict and the eggs were overcooked. The egg, um, the egg muffin, the um, English muffin, it was overcooked too. But it was still okay. Like, but it just wasn't what it was. And just like um, the prices too. Like I was looking through their menu and their filet mignon was $55. It's like I can remember pre-pandemic it was 25 to 30, I want to say. So it was just, hope someday we'll get back to where it was, but I just feel like so much is just not the same. There are a few places we go and eat and I'm like, this is still like good quality, good service, everything is great, but there's been so many times where I'm like, the service is just awful, the food is awful, like we just don't eat out that much anymore, which is probably good. You know, I've been losing a little weight and cooking at home, so. That's been good. It's just so hard. Like you spend all this time in the kitchen cooking and then your children don't eat it. <laughs> I have such picky eaters and 
my oldest is starting to come around. He's 11 now, so he'll, he's starting to try new things. But my young, my younger son, he's seven, and he's like, oh, Mom, why do you cook this? Like, I don't eat this. And so it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, so I feel like I didn't really stitch a whole lot last month. This month I've gotten a little, like, more stitching in just because of, I've been having more days off. So I will just, like, my daughter, she still goes to daycare, and then my boys... You know, I'll like stitch in the morning and then we'll go like hang out at the pool or I'll, and um, then we'll come back, have dinner, and then I'll stitch some more in the evening. So I've gotten a lot more stitching time in. And then this week they've been gone. So I've been stitching from like the time I dropped my daughter off to daycare till the time I go pick her up, basically. So I've gotten like a lot, a good bit of progress on some of my projects. Um, not as much as I would like, but it's okay. And, um, that one is a Dimensions kit. I think it's called Teddy Bears. I'm not real sure. I stitched it for my oldest son though. I was so excited to be pregnant and having a baby. So I um, stitched that while I was pregnant with him. Okay, so I'll go ahead and, um, oh, well, I'll save it for the end of the video. We did get another kitten too. I felt like Mocha was a little lonely, he kept like wanting to play with the dog, and my dog's nine, so he doesn't want to, or she doesn't want to play anymore, and he would like just jump on her, and she wouldn't, she wasn't having that. So let's see, what should I um, show first? I did pull out, um, let me see here, this Plum Street project, Plum Street Samplers. This is God Bless America. And if I look at this piece, I'm like, oh, I can do this in a week. That'll take me no time. I started this over a year ago. So I finally finished the house though. There is a lot of stitching in that house. Like I worked on that so, so much. And then this is the bowl and the leaves and the eagle will sit on top of it. So I still got a good bit to do. And then the border, I love the border. I always love like the look of borders, but then when it actually comes to stitching them, I'm like, ugh, it is over and over and over and over again. But I do love the way they look, like especially like the floral border borders. I guess they call this one a penny border. That's what I've heard a lot of people call it. And, um, what was I going to, else was I going to say about this? Oh, I am stitching this. I believe I'm stitching this on the cardboard fabric, which is 36 count Patriots Brew. They recommend doing um, one strand floss over two, but I like a little bit uh, thicker coverage. So I'm stitching it two over two. Again, still got a long ways to go. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to finish this by the 4th of July this year. And I pulled it out and started stitching on it. And I'm like, that's not happening. <laughs> we got about less than what, two weeks till the 4th of July. So no. I mean, maybe, maybe if I like stitched on nothing else but that project, maybe. I don't know. Let's see, I also am really, really bad about preparing for these things. I like think I'm like ready to go and then. Let me take my cue snap off. It's like about the storm again. We've had so much bad weather this last um, week. Like just really, really strong thunderstorms. Like potential to produce tornadoes. I think there actually was one over in Pensacola the other day. But and now it's, it's thundering again. It's like, all right. So this is the modern folk embroidery piece. This is the, let's see if I got it pulled up here. I meant to, but I guess I, mm, let me turn, kick off the blue too, because hopefully it comes back to the, I have one of my, hopefully that helps to hear a little bit better. All right, so modern, folk and birdie. <clears throat> this is the Reaching Skyward Stitch Along. I went ahead and I just decided just to go with the one it came with, centerpiece. I was debating on buying this and um, I liked, which one was it that I liked? I liked that one, but 
I just went ahead and <clears throat> did the one it came with. So I am 50% done with this, so I'm on track because it is June, and so we are halfway through the year almost. So I am just doing it till I reach 50% on Pattern Keeper. Like I, I'm not doing like, I got it lined out to do 12 sections like that, but I don't want to have to move my Q-snap around that much. So I'm just doing, um, so I hit that number. Like I think you have to stitch like 1 12th of 100 is, I want to say it's 8.6, I believe. So I'm just stitching until I hit that number. I am doing it in, I have to pull up the thread color, so I have my, my starfish needle liner right in the middle of it though. Very cute little pearl off of Etsy. Pearl starfish. So I am halfway done. I feel like, like to me it looks like I should be further, but then you like look at how much fabric I left. Although I think I have a bit of extra there and I am doing it in let me pull out my the colors that I went with are 924 and 612 so those colors I wish now that I like the navy that I wish I would have done more of like this one in a like a kind of stone gray instead of like this gold brown. I'm still happy with it. And I still, I still think it looks good. So I wanted it to look like the picture, but then I saw someone else's picture on Instagram of um, like another stone gray color. And I was like, oh, I should have done that. So that is reaching skyward. That has been taking up the most of my stitching time is stitching that. Um, piece every, every month. I think, sorry for the noise, I want to say it's um, 4,500 stitches. So sometimes, you know, I get to stitch like 100 stitches a day. So that it takes, it can take a long time. But then when I get like a full day of stitching, I can stitch like, I think 800 stitches. It was the most I've ever gotten so far. I use pattern keepers so I can keep up with how many stitches I'm stitching. I want to see if that's like how much I was able to get. Uh, let's see what else have I done. Nothing like that. Sorry to keep like moving around here. I have like all these baskets I get from Target with stitching in it. Ew, why did it look kind of dirty? Oh, it's just coming out. Okay, so let's start with this one here. This is another one I have been keeping up with stitching every month. Um, this one is the, um, oh, what's it called? Another Year Creeps By. That's what it is. And so it's it's 12 parts, so I feel like I am, I started it, I think last October, so I feel like I'm in the home stretch now with this one. I'm on the last row. So I just finished, since last time y'all saw it, I did, which two blocks do I do? These two blocks here were the ones that I did since you saw it last. So just three more to go, and then I should be done for in time for Halloween. I haven't decided how I'm gonna frame it. I'm gonna try to frame it myself. I'm thinking black frame, just simple black frame. Will probably um, look best. Uh, this one is, I believe it's called Finian. It's by Seraphim Fa Fabrics and it's Finian, it's 40 count. This is my little needle miter in the middle of it here. So again, I was in love with this border, but then after stitching it, I'm like, oh, I don't like stitching borders. But it, it's not so bad. It, it just, it gets very repetitive, stitching it over and over and over again. And so all I've got left are, I'm stitching it with the call for colors. 
So I've just got those three left and then I'll be done. So I should got, so I got July, August, September. So I'll be done hopefully early September. I can, I'm going to try to order, I've seen some places online to order frames from. You like just take your own measurements. So I'm going to try to do that. Let's see what happens. Try to frame it myself. I was debating between pinning and lacing too. I think I'm going to try, I might try to cut the fabric down some and then try to lace it. I don't know, lacing looks like it would be hard to get it tight the way you want. Seems like pinning might be easier. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Um, another one, I worked on very little, but I did work some on it. This is my um, sampler's not forgotten piece. Sorry, I should have done this beforehand, so. This key snap's really tight. Reason I stitch more in my key stuff, like I have um almond frames and like they are great. I love my almond frames, but it's just such a pain to get it in and out, and, like to change your projects. So I just Q snaps are like so much easier to swap in and out. So that's why I've been lately I've been stitching more on the Q snap. I used to not change projects so much. I used to be a monogamous stitcher and that's why I got stuff like it done. But now I'm like all over the place. So this is English Garden. Oh, let me move my Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, this would be good. Need a liner for the new stitch along for the Alf Forest. Treasure Island. All right, so this is, okay, I do have to say I do love stitching this border. This one's been a lot of fun to stitch. I think there is, let's see, I think there's four different colors in there. I just love that pattern though. So I finished, I can't remember where I was last time I showed this. I can't, I may have been done with the alphabet. So I am starting here on that design there. And I really like these band samplers because you could stitch like a variety of different kind of so there's no specialty stitches, so this is um, English Garden by Sampler's Not Forgotten. And I just saw, I guess they did a retreat, it must have been last year, but I saw Lisa, the kindred stitcher, she pulled out, I think it's called Hummingbird Garden, and I was like, oh, I have to have that. But she hasn't released it yet, so I think the retreat was last year, so I'm hoping it will come out pretty soon. But I love that. So I am right there. So I'm probably like mm, over a, I'd say over a third of the way done. Don't know if I'll have a finish on that this year. Probably not, but just keep checking on. Another one that I put very little time in to, hoping to get some more timeline on it this month is my uh, forest embroidery piece. Um, ever flowering garden and it is beautiful I've seen um, a few people have finished stitching it and it's just gorgeous but there is that look at like how they stitched this with their how perfectly they did the variegated floss how it goes from dark to light blue I don't think I'm gonna be able to manage doing that so it's gonna look a, a part probably look a little different, but I love the, the look of that. This is it's huge, and it's cut to size, so it's it's quite large piece. So I have I am working over here. So those. I think this one was done last time you saw it, but I did do the butterfly in this since you saw it last. 
So one thing about this is you have to stitch everything twice, except for um, what's in the middle, because everything is repeated. I got a long way to go. So I was planning on trying to do, um, my goal was to do one row a year. So like I've done this top part here, blow it back up here. So like I've done this top part and then I was gonna do this one and then part of this one and this one and then this one. That's my goal, so like a five-year plan. I think one, two, three, four. Yeah, like five-year plan, maybe six. Yeah, probably more like six. So I should be halfway through this row right now. So the halfway point is there, I am there. So I don't know if I'm gonna meet my goal. I was really hoping to get there, but I'm hoping once, um, once I do start overnight, like I just now started it, so I'm really getting a lot of stitching time in um, during my week off. So I'm hoping that will like help me get some more progress. I think one thing is working on the uh, modern folk embroidery piece. I think next year, um, I'm gonna try not to do it next year. I mean, I love those pieces. They are gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but it is just a lot of stitching. So um, thinking maybe to get more pro uh, progress on my current projects, I'm gonna try to not do that one. <laughs> and then move it. maybe I can like move on with get some progress on these other projects. So, um, let's see, the other one, like I've made like just little, little bits of progress. Um, I also have been stitching on, this is my daughter's stocking. She is turning three in September, um, so I'm hoping um, to get this done, this is the holiday glow stocking. Each of my family members has one, so there's five of us. So she'll be the last one. I've already done four of the stockings, so she's the last one to get a stocking. So I did make some progress on this one. I think last time you saw it, I had done the pants, so now I'm starting on the snowman over here. So I finished down the side here, and now my plan is to work my way down to the heel and um, toe of the stocking, get all that done, and then come back up and then finish the um, name. The one thing, I don't, I'm not real crazy about the name. Um, it's not stitched. But I don't know. I might just stitch it like they have it just to save time that way, because all the other stockings I've stitched, this part has been stitched and it's a lot, like it's a lot of stitching. So if I stitch it just like they have it, that will save me a lot of time. So I really love this. I'm excited to get down and start working on um, Santa's bag of toys. I like the green color. So that will be fun to get down there and start working on. I don't know if I worked on my shadow line or not. I'm gonna show it though. Um, plan is, I think today I'm going to work on Santa stocking, and then tomorrow will be my last day of my seven days. I'm gonna try to work on my shadow lane tomorrow. It is gorgeous. I love it. This is um, fairy flower garden mandala. I just love those dragonflies. So most of the, the dragonflies are done with the stitching. I still have to back stitch them, but like in terms of stitching. So that means um, I'm gonna do the being at the very end. I'm gonna save it for last. So that means all the dragonflies, tails and bodies are, and a good bit of the wings are beaded. Like all the tail though is beaded. That's why they have no tails. So right now I am working on this outer border here. This is, the end here. So I have made it to one side of the end. So um, I've still got to, I want to finish all of the stitching, especially stitches and back stitch. So I'm going to finish it all in the middle here. And then I'm either going to work up or work down, probably down first. So then I'll get to do 
stitch the fairies. There'll be a, four fairies, one in each corner here. And then I'll have to do this. <laughs> doing it once is fine, but doing it four times gets a little monotonous. So you just gotta, like, you know, you just gotta eat your vegetables like uh, Lisa the Kinder Stitcher does and just push through it. <clears throat> oh, and let me show you a picture of that. So I think it did pull it up. This is the finished piece there. So I'm excited to start working on the um, fairies. Their skin is over one. So that's gonna be, take a minute. Uh, all right, so is that all I shared? Yes, I did get some haul. So normally in April, um, European Cross Stitch has their yearly sale. I decided not to participate this year because she kind of asked like, um, hold off on ordering Gloriana's. And like, I just like to get it all in one. Like I'm fine with the weight, I don't care. So she did say it, it's okay to go ahead and order it, but I thought it, you know, it'd help her try to get caught back up first. Cause normally you wait about six months, but since the um, pandemic is, I, I got two kits in the mail, I think last month, and it took a year to get those, which is fine. Like I still haven't even made that much progress on um, fairy, um, the one I just showed you, the fairy flower one. So I did get um, those two that were last April sale in the mail. So this one is the Persian Iris Garden. And look at, like I haven't opened it yet. Look at how perfect these come. This one's got a good bit of um, Rainbow Gallery. Uh, I'll go ahead and open that so you can see. Usually I open them anyway just to like go over and make sure everything's fair. But haven't had a chance. So this is um, the bead pack. Gorgeous, gorgeous blues in there and golds. That one's a really pretty one. Lots of crystal color ones. And there's even some um, cubes in there. I'm trying to see. There's a center. I, wonder, I bet that cube is what goes in the center, that big blue cube there. I don't see the normal, normal flower piece that I'm chosen with. Um, gorgeous needle paints. These are silks, but they are um, not variegated. They are solid dyed. So lots of beautiful blues. Look at those blues. Aren't those gorgeous colors? Ooh, purples. I bet those will <laughs> bleed like crazy. Um, there is, how many cards are here? five cards of the gold, the treasure braid. That is, don't remember what exactly the color is. Um, four more golds and one blue in that one. So lots of sparkly. And then you got your um, Karen Water Lilies. That color is gorgeous, love it. Some blues, that's a pretty one. Uh, what is this? I have never stitched with this one before. Let me just take it out for a second, sorry. So this is Silk and Pearl. Maybe I have stitched with this, it kinda, no, what I stitched with was um, the other Water Lilies one, though, I forget what, they, what it's called, but it, it's real thick like that. But Karen makes another one that looks a lot like that. Oh, here's the Gloriana. These are the ones that are taking forever to get. Gorgeous. And this one's a new one for me too. Northern, Northern Lights. I haven't stitched with that one before either. So that is gorgeous. Um, Persian, let me... Let me just pull it up to show you guys what it looks like. I want to say that one is one that all four quadrants look the same. 
yeah. So I feel like the earlier ones, like a lot, are very repetitive. Whereas like the later ones, she tried to change stuff more so you don't stitch the same thing four times. And then this one is Mystery 15. I'm gonna have to look it up because I don't know, remember what Mystery 15 is. Oh, it keeps messing up. It keeps like auto-correcting. All right, so 15 is the Deep Blue Sea Mandala. I don't know, I usually stitch them like as you can tell, like on the um, just antique light. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep that going or pick out, cause you could really do like, I feel like some maybe pretty blues fabric with that one. But then I felt like everything wouldn't pop so much. Like there's a lot of blue here. I'm not sure how much would pop. Oh, so here's the B pack. This one has lots. I can't really see because of the lots of colors, lots of variety of beads. And then there are uh, a few specialty beads there, some cubes, and uh, it looks like those are round beads there. Look, a lot of times they have bicones in them, but I don't see bicones. And then lots of gorgeous blues. I think blue is my color, favorite color to stitch with. So you got all of those. Oh, ooh, look at that one, pretty. That one is Shark Bay, perfect name. It's a dinky dye. It's gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Ooh, that one's pretty. That one is Bermuda Reef. And pretty pink. And then best part is with all the sparkly. Sometimes the stuff is, can be a bit of a challenge to stitch with. My favorite is the, um, my favorite thing of all time to stitch with though is the Silk Lame Braid. Cause it's sparkly silk. I love stitching with this stuff. some gorgeous colors. Look at those gorgeous colors. Look at that green. Can't really. Isn't that beautiful? Someday I will retire and I will get to spend lots of time stitching. Ooh, one more. This one's really pretty too. Both of these are really pretty colors. Look at those quilt colors. Those are both, um, these are both treasure braids. Like I know some people prefer stitching treasure braid over um, Krynik number four, but honestly, like I flat iron them and like once you do that, I think the thing with the Krynik is that it, since it's on a spool, it curls. So if you take a, like, you know, what you flat iron your hair with, Take that and just do it a couple times and it makes it smooth and then like I can't tell a difference in stitching with treasure braid or chronic once I do that. Alright. So no plans to start either of those. Sorry for the noise. Um, oh another thing 
I just got this in the mail today. So I got two um, bread packs from Al Forest. Like the shipping charges for this, I think it was like thirty dollars. I can. So I went ahead and got two. Um, let me pull up. So one of them I'm gonna break down. I didn't want to start anything new this year, but I really want to start the um, Treasure Island. So this one is for Treasure Island. This is the DMC. Look how perfect those threads look. But this is the DMC variation variation of the threads for it. I guess there's also um like a I guess it's a Russian brand thread. Look at this new release they just came out with. I, was like, I wish I would have just waited to order these threads so I could order these threads too, because I want to stitch this so bad. Look at that. How gorgeous. But I really need to finish my other Al Forest embroidery piece first. This is called um, Wondrous Garden Custodians. I think my favorite part, I love the, um, which part is it? The deer antelope guys, those guys down, those guys down there. I love them. No, oh, I was trying to make it focus, but I hit the wrong thing to focus. It's just beautiful. I love it. So anyway, um, what was I looking for? I was looking for the treasure island. So. So far they released three pieces. I haven't picked out my fabric yet. I'm still, I was going to just stitch it. They call for the, um, the one that's pre-printed. Um, it's like got the pre printed modeling on it. That's by Zweigart, um, Vintage Country Mocha. I was going to stitch on that, but one, two, three stitches out of it. So I'm trying to decide something else, but this is where they are so far. I think it's supposed to finish up in December. Oh, and that's the Russian version. Let me pull up the... They do give it to you in English too, so it doesn't... So there is versus Treasure Island in English. Love the little pirate house. And then the pirate ship too. Also got the needle minder. I was like, well, since I'm already spending all that money on shipping, I might as well throw. I want my, they have like several different variations. I think there's like a pirate ship. I want to say a compass, the book. I went with the parrot. I thought he was cute. So you can keep me company while I stitch. Um, I also got the threads for the red and black sampler. Let me see if I can find it here. I thought maybe like typing in red would pull it up, but I guess it pulled up all their throwbacks because they have red in them. All right, so here's the red and black sampler. Love this piece too. It's gorgeous. So mostly just black apparently. There's what is it? Three, three reds in there, and the rest is all black. Which it kind of comes across more as blue. But black. And then I got the needle minder. I don't know which piece part this is supposed to really look like. I guess the center piece there. So I got that to stitch. So I'll pick out a fabric for a treasure island and maybe I'll start that at the end of the month. 
And I did get a lot of haul. This is my one, two, three stitch haul. Got a lot of stuff. So the no money that I normally spend on my um, chatteling, chatteling kit from European Cross Stitch, I decided just to get a one, two, three stitch haul. So I like went through my wish list and bought a bunch of stuff. So this one is Garden of Stitches um, by Sampler's Not Forgotten. So it's kind of like that one I've been working on, the English Garden. And it's also a French Garden, which I have a French Garden too. I think it's stored away. So I would like to have all three of those done. And then hopefully the Humming Garden, um, Hummingbird Garden will get released too. I'd like to stitch all four of those because they're all gorgeous. I got a piece of fabric. This one, I can't remember what I was going to stitch on. I had plans for it though. Um, let me see here. I did get, I guess Dimensions re-released this. Um, this one has the Ada in it. This is Fills of Lavender, but I've seen a lot of the um, re-released. It has plastic canvas in it. I figured it's probably about the same. You just could swap, swap out the um, plastic canvas for you know whatever you want to stitch in it. It looks like it's full coverage. So if you want to stitch on Ada or whatever, love this. It reminds me of the lavender fields in um, France. All right, so I got these, the hands-on design baskets. I love all these. So the winter one, I think this is the newest release in the fall. And I saw her like actually holding the pillows and like they're actually good size pillows. They're not like, you think like little, they're like good size, like that big bigger. So um, I got some reprints. Well, this one I believe is a reprint of um, You and I Knew We Stand. Little Birds. Humming of Bees. I got a lot of blackbirds because I'm trying to like, sometimes I do one and done prints so there's some out there I would really like to have. Um, Honeysuckle Manor, which I believe there is more in this one. Yeah, there is more. This one has is more like a book. Um, that's really that's really cute there. That one's cute. I like the those flowers on that one. And then I guess this is the original of the cover pieces done off of. I believe that's honeysuckle in there. Yeah. And then this is the updated. I like that one. There's another one in here too. I thought I saw that I liked. Oh, these are really cute. I must say really cute a lot because I hear my daughter going, I cute, like all the time. It's like, I cute. So that, and then I got, this is a reprint, the um, Crown and Shields. So that one's done in red. It looks like this must be the original in the back though. And it has different colors there. Oh, looks like they did it in red and then this one down here is in color. And then there are a few more like little patterns in there too. Um, not like a whole lot though. Yeah, it's mostly just that one. Um, this is Come Into My Garden. All joy, all joys for thine. I guess that one was based off of a antique sampler. This is Agnes Platt's strawberry sampler. 
And looks like this one's got a few other patterns in it too. Like that little one there. I got a birds of a feather. There's one birds of a feather that I really want. I was really disappointed when um, 1884 Street um, released it, but then it turned out like the person she thought had the rights didn't have the rights, so she had to pull it back off. Cause I wanted to buy the um, I can't think of what the name of that one is. But I did. Um, this one is still readily available. Um, Bloom where you are planted. I really like that though. Um, I bought one of the new Plum Streets, the Penny Spring. So I think this is a series. I have the Penny Autumn too. So hopefully we'll see Penny, what will be left, winter and summer soon. Uh, I got Quakers and Quilts. This is a Rosewood Manor. I think I'm going to need a lifetime just to stitch all this stuff. Let Love Rain. This is a Teresa Kogut. There's a couple, she released some new ones. And there's a couple of those I really want to get. The, um, it's like Stitch With Your Hands or something, that one. It's gorgeous. This one's a really pretty piece, though. Um, it's really quite large, though. Also got, um, this is Remember Me. I really like the border on that one. This is Strawberry Manor. I've never stitched a Teresa Kogut. I think it, I don't know which one I'll start. Probably this one. I like this Remember Me a lot. The where to start one. Oh, I missed a blackbird. This is, um, what is this? What Remains. I like that one a lot. I got um, blue flower, moonlight sampler. I've seen a couple people working on this. That owl is really cute. Oh, here's French garden. This is another one of the samplers not forgotten. The border is really cute. I love it. That one's really pretty. I think I'm gonna start. I can't decide between. Once I finish English Garden, if I want to stitch this one or the other one I showed first. That was a really tough choice. They're both really pretty. But if Hummingbird Garden comes out before I'm done, I'm probably going to start that one first because I really like that one. I just hope that she's planning. I can't imagine not planning on releasing it because they have a lot of money um, to lose out on. Usually, like it seems like whenever they do one of those retreats, they get the um, exclusive for the year and then they usually, most of the designers release it. This is, I hear everyone call this Dutch Beauty. I have no idea how you pronounce that though. I like to watch um, Fox and Rabbit and in like the older video, she has this behind her and it's just gorgeous. It's, that one's a big one though. Let's see, I got a, um, a few Just Nans. I got Winter Rose. It's just like kind of like a little ornament. This one, I thought that was cute. Frosty Gnomes. I love the little gnome beards. Uh, let's see, I got, I think this one was a re-release Christmas piece. A reprint. I like these, that it comes with um, embellishment packs. So that's convenient. And then um, Winter Blues, I believe this was also a reprint. That one's really pretty. I really like the blues. And that one has a little bead pack in there as well. <clears throat> and then the, um, I feel like this is a companion piece to something. I can't remember what the, his eye is on a sparrow. That one is a big, huge sampler too. I want to say on Fox and Rabbit, she has this one done as well. I can't remember if it's this one or a different one though. <clears throat> there is a lot going on on that one too. Pretty sure she has that one too. Oh, this is the, um, consider the least. That was the companion piece I was trying to think of. 
I want to say she has one of those done, but I don't remember which one it is. Those have a lot in them. And then I got the Unfriendle Sisters tarps. I'm so glad that, um, I can't think what her name is, um, that she re-released these though. What's her name? I can hear her voice, but I can't think of what her name is. But these um, were originally released as a set, or like as one, and it was, the prices on eBay for these were going crazy. I want to say like $500 um, someone could get from selling their original. But then she really released them, but she released them as two patterns, which is fine with me. I don't have to have them together. And I love them both. I think I like this one more though. Just a little bit. So if I um, start one, I, I start with that one. But they're both gorgeous. It's crazy to think they were both 10 years old when they did these. 10! Little girls just stitching away on these. So that was all my haul. Um, I did want to share one other thing. So um, there is a Etsy seller, Art Inspirate. Oh, sorry, I like getting right up in the Showed like some stuff from I've gotten from her before, like um, this is a bead box here. So you open it up and you can put your beads in there. I still have beads in here. I can hear from my last um, Nora chart that I stitched. So I put um, put like little number cards in there with the beads, so I know what color is which. And it's um, Art and Sprayed as her Etsy shop. She's from um, Ukraine and she's still able to get things out. Um, she also gave like, this was a freebie that she sent with it. A little, um, look at these. I ordered these. And they're so pretty. I'll try to remember to link her shop down below. She has, I have like these gorgeous boxes that I've ordered from her too to um, put thread and such in. Jeez. Like really on there tight. So I haven't looked at all of these yet, so this will, but aren't, these are just so pretty. The little Ukrainian design type things on them. I love like the aesthetic of the um, Eastern European stitchers. Like everything's always so pretty and dainty. Their stitching is always like, flawless and perfect. I try to get my stitching like that. And, like, perfect. I love the blue on that one, it's pretty. I'm not sure how they got this on there. Like these are really like, I'm having to really pull these apart. I was a little worried that the design was gonna come off, but I don't know how they, the design is on there, but it's really on there. And then the last one. I think, how many was that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So there's twelve there. And I want to say it, it wasn't like crazy expensive and the shipping wasn't crazy either. But it, it took less than a month to ship it from Ukraine. So um, one other thing I want to share. Let me see if I can go get my kitten. All right, so this is Koi. Um, that is his shelter name. And I think we're just going to keep it because he looks like a Koi fish. He's white. He's got like the orange spots. I don't think you're going to be able to tell, but he also has different eye colors. You can kind of see he's got a blue one and an orange, orangey yellow one there. But he, he is just the sweetest little boy. He has been just like 
a big cuddler. He loves pets. He's very sweet. He got neutered a few days ago, so he's been a little, kind of seems a little lethargic, so I don't know if it's because of the neutering, but he's very sweet. He loves to cuddle. He sleeps right next to me. Um, when I first brought him home, he kept wanting to sleep like right here on top of me. And I, I can't sleep with like anything or anyone touching me. I have to, for me to sleep, everything has to be just perfect. I have to be like right temperature, quiet. I don't want anybody touching me. My husband's got to be like all the way on the other side of the bed. And then he was wanting to lay like right there. So I didn't sleep at all hardly that night. But now he's finally gotten to where he'll sleep um, next to me. And that's fine. He can sleep next to me. Just not on top of me. <laughs> And then sometimes I'll wake up and he'll be like above my head right here, which that's fine too, as long as he's not like laying on top of my head. He's been very sweet, little boy. Um, and then Mocha have been fighting a lot. Like we had to separate them for the first few days. Now they're finally getting to the, where they're not like at each other constantly. They're starting to kind of be able to be in the same room and not fighting with each other. And I can't, it seems like they're more play fighting sometimes and sometimes it gets a little too aggressive and we break them up or I like follow them around with a water bottle and we'll just spray <laughs> spray one of them usually mocha he seems to be more of an aggressor mocha is really bad with his claws too like wanting to scratch the furniture and so I've been trying to spray him every time I hear him scratching the furniture too hopefully that'll break me we have scratching boards all over the house and of course he wants to um scratch on the couch or we have um our kitchen chairs or cloth and he wants to which all of it needs is really old furniture and all needs to be replaced but I want to break them up the habit before we replace them I'm trying to wait for the kids to get a little bit older because right now they just spill like everything all over the place so once I think once Vivi gets maybe like five or six maybe then I'll start replacing some furniture and hopefully by then I'll have break them that break that habit so you won't be scratching anymore but I feel like since we lost Chloe I just feel like we didn't needed another cat like he was wanting to pounce on the dog all the time and she's old so she wasn't having it so I thought if we got him a kitten while they're both still really young um, I felt like they'd get along better so we adopted him I had him for two weeks now and he's, he's been really good and we, we really enjoyed having um, two kittens in the house. <laughs> they're a little wild at times though, but they're fun. So um, hopefully um, hopefully I will get to film Floss 2 next month. My boys are out of school right now, and so they're home all the time. And like when they see the camera come out, they want to be on it. They're always like, Mom, when can I have my own Floss 2 channel? I'm like, I don't know, we'll talk about it. So they're always like wanting to try to get on the camera or they'll start like, when can I have my floss too? I'm like, what would you even do? What are you going to talk about? I don't know, like gaming and stuff. Like, uh, I don't know if I want my children like, I like I put them on like a little sometimes, but I don't think I want them to have their own channel. I don't know. Maybe when they get a little bit older. So I hope everyone's having a great summer. Um, Fourth of July is right around the corner. I think I will be off for the 4th of July. I think that will be my next week rotation. I think it falls on a Tuesday. So we're going overnight. It officially starts July 1st at work. So my partner will be the, um, I think he, he'll be the first one to go. And um, so he'll get the 4th of July. I was a little nervous about the 4th of July because I don't know what the ER is going to be calling needing. So he's worked hospital before. The hospital he worked at though, that he said they were more outpatient than inpatient, so. But he still has a lot more experience than me. I think for the first month, they're gonna have another pharmacist stay with us till midnight. So that makes me feel a little bit more secure. Um, I'm just not ready to be by myself yet, I think at work, but I'm gonna get there. I feel, I'm starting to feel more confident but it's it's a lot it's a big learning curve so um everyone have a great summer and i will hopefully see you in a month bye guys